The challenge of the Yukon. On King! On you Huskies! The Wonder Dog King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the new Northwest country, where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog King met that challenge, and justice ruled triumphant. As Sergeant Preston drove his dog team along the trail bordering the river near Selkirk, he heard a child's voice calling frantically. Come on, Mabel! Jump! Jump quick! Oh, help somebody! Mabel, you'll get drowned! I'm coming to get you! Oh, King! Oh, you huskies! What's wrong down there? Here are you! Come out of that water! Jimmy, come back here. Now, get up there on shore. But my dog, you see him, he's out there on that device. It broke away. I gotta get him. I'll get him for you some way, Jim. But don't you go in after him. Oh, look, he slipped. He's in the water and he's going under. He'll bounce. He's so little. All right, King. I sure can get him, boy. Go get him. King will get him, Jimmy. Your dog won't drown. Mabel's only a puppy. Oh, I hope King can bring him in. Current's too strong for your pup, but King can handle it. There. See? He's got him. Fella, that's a boy. We'll have to run along shore. Yes, current sweeping him downstream. Poor Mabel, he's half drowned, I'll bet. This won't hurt him. All right, King, good work. How's your dog, Jim? He's still alive. Mabel. Come back to my sled, Jimmy. We'll get you and these dogs back to your cabin and dry you off. Do you think you'll get a bad cold, Sergeant? No. We'll dry him off and warm him up. I'm sure he'll be good as new. <laughs> Oh, King. Hiya, Huskies. Here we are, Jim. Gee, you're swell, Sergeant Preston, to bring us home on your sled like this. Mabel's all right, I think. I held him inside my parka. Come on. Why, you're soaked to the waist, Jimmy. You're wet to the knees. And poor King, all oh, but he's frizzing. Jimmy. Oh, hello, Sergeant Preston. Hello, Mrs. Rogers. What on earth has happened? Mabel went out on the ice and it broke loose and went floating down the river. King saved them. Mabel again. That dog gets you in more trouble. They're both all right, I think, Mrs. Rogers, but uh, Jimmy better change his clothes. Oh, you're wet too, Sergeant. Just to these. Bring King here beside the fire. Mabel is shivering. Guess I better wrap a blanket around him. Here, give Mabel to me. Now you change those clothes at once. All right, Mom. <laughs> now just why does he call that dog Mabel? Oh, he likes that name. He had another dog once called Mabel, so this one had to be the same. <laughs> Even though he should be called Mike or Prince. <laughs> well, what kind of dog is Mabel? My dad says he's a thoroughbred mongrel. Oh. <laughs> a mixture of just about everything, I guess. All I know is he's more trouble than any dog I ever saw. He chews everything and carries Buries things out, buries them, but and he... Bob says he has the best disposition of any dog in the world. Yes, that dog is just like your father. He trusts everybody and thinks everyone is his friend. I want another pair of mucklucks, Pierre. But Pete, I have just sold you a new pair last week. What happened to them? <laughs> Is that darn dog Mabel that my son has. Yeah. He carries everything away and buries it. <laughs> I wish he'd grow up. I've had six pairs of mittens in the last three weeks. He's buried most of them in the snow. <laughs> you are a kind man, Pete. Most men would shoot such dog. <laughs> uh, here's some fine mucklucks. You try them on. All right. Hello, Pierre. Hello, Jake. You want something? Well, I need some flour and tobacco. Uh, oh, I hate to ask you, Pierre, but I'm going to need a little more credit. Jake, me, I am generous man, uh, I think. But three times now I have given you credit when long time ago I should have stopped. This time I must say no. But Pierre, I, I ain't got a dime. What's wrong, Jake? Got no money? I've had some tough luck. Give him what he wants, Pierre. Put it on my account. But, Pete... But, gee, thanks, Pete. You're sure a good fella. Oh, well, all right. Here is your tobacco, and here is flour. I'll, I'll pay you back, Pete, as soon as I get on my feet. Well, so long. So long, Jake. 
I'll uh, take these mucklucks, Pierre. Guess I'd better wear them. You should not give your money to Jake. He's no good. Well, maybe he's having a little hard luck. Hard luck at gambling. <laughs> Never have I seen such man as you. How many men have you upstake? Oh, quite a few. But you never can tell. If they hit pay dirt, half of it will be mine. Eh, some of them you hardly know. If they find gold, maybe they don't tell you. They have to file their claim here in Dawson, and when they do, I got the papers to show I grub staked them, and half of the claim is mine. Well, no one deserves luck more than you. <laughs> maybe the world needs more people like Pete Rogers. Uh... You are trusting men. Two men were camped a few miles outside of Dawson. Pierce Vance was older and dominated Bill Davis, who was smaller and milder. We'll stay here for a few days till we find out what's happening in town. You better go into Dawson tomorrow. Uh, somebody might recognize me and start asking questions. They won't know you. That beard changes your face. Find out if Pete Rogers is still around, where he's living. Hey, Pierce, don't you think it'd be better to give me a share of our claim? After all, he did gobstake us when we didn't have any money. Well, are we I don't this? start that again. This claim is too good to give him half of it. It'll mean thousands of dollars. We ain't gonna do it. Well, you have to file a claim. I don't see how you... We'll gonna... file it. After we get the paper Rogers has, it shows he grub staked us. If he loses that, he can't prove nothing legally. And the claim is all ours. Now go on, get to Dawson right away. Looking, hi, Huskies. Hello there, Jimmy. Thought I'd stop and see how you and Mabel are after your dip in the river last Monday. No, we're both fine. Didn't hurt Mabel a bit. Look at him. I think he knows King. He's trying to show off in front of him. I guess he is trying to impress King. Uh, you going to the show in Dawson tonight? Oh, sure. Pop and Mom are taking me. I never saw a magician before. They say he takes things out of hats and makes things disappear and everything. Guess just about everybody in Dawson will be there. Jimmy! Jimmy! Oh, hello, Sergeant. Hello, Pete. Something wrong? What's wrong, Pop? It's that darn dog again. I can't find one of my new mucklucks. I bet he buried it somewhere. Oh, Mabel. Well, I think this is the first time I ever saw you mad, Pete. I could just blame that fool animal. I just bought those boots two days ago. Look at him, leaping around, showing off in front of your dog. Gee, I'm sorry, Pop. Guess you should have hung your boots up on a nail. I'm through running our house to suit Mabel. Hanging everything up beyond his reach. Well, I knew Muckluck. He's got something out of the snow. He wants to play tug of war with King. I knew Muckluck. Bring that here, you mangy cur. Jimmy, catch him. Mabel, give that to me. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. I guess all pups are alike, Pete. Here, Pop. Here's your boot. It doesn't hurt a bit. Now, I want you to give that dog a good whipping. But, Pop, I can't whip him for digging up the boot. It was burying it that was bad. <laughs> Wasn't it, Sergeant? Jimmy's right, Pete. If Mabel is rewarded for digging up that Muckluck... Maybe you'll find some of the other things he's buried. Oh, you're a good dog, Mabel. Good old fella. Yeah, yeah this beats everything. <laughs> Having to pet him when I want to kick him in the slats. <laughs> good dog, Mabel. You dug up my boot. He's proud of himself. <laughs> Look at him wiggle. Well, guess I'll be going. See you tonight, Pete. Jimmy says you're all going to see the magician. Yeah, maybe I can make a deal with him to come out here and make Mabel's pick. <laughs> This is Pete's cabin. Gone to show, all right. Yeah, everything's dark. Give me that lantern. I'll light it inside. You better stay out here and watch. So you leave the door open. If I see anything, I'll whistle. Hey, you shut up. <laughs> Friendly little cuss, ain't you? Here, get down. I don't want to play with you. Get down, I say. What's taking you so long? Yeah, I found it. It was in the tin box. Took me a long time to locate it. I got the paper here in my mitten. Go out and watch. I have to put everything back the way I found it. Hurry up. Someone's bound to come soon. Hey, Piss, what the heck are you doing? That show will be out any minute. That's the craziest thing I ever heard of. 
I put my mitten right down there on the floor with that paper in it, and it's gone. I've looked all over for it. Just ain't in this cabin. Well, you bats, look in your pockets. Yes, I looked in my pockets. I looked everywhere. Maybe this pup was playing with it. I thought of that. But I've searched every inch of this cabin. Couldn't have swallowed that mitten. Well, the door was open. Well, let's have a look outside. Bring that lantern. You stay in there, pup. There's tracks all over this place. Don't see any mitten. It'd be here if he took it out. Well, if we can't find it, it's a cinch nobody else can. A uh, ghost must have taken mitten. Well, anyhow, I guess we're safe. Tomorrow morning, I'm going over and file a claim. The office is just a few doors from the hotel. You better tell me everything that happened, Pete. Now, you're sure you had this paper that proved your grub stake, Pierce? Sure, I had it. Right here in this tin box. When I saw Pierce, he said if I produced this paper, I could have my share of his claim. I thought it was kind of funny, but I knew I had it. Were there any witnesses to prove your grub staking? No, just Pierce and Bill. Well, there's nothing you can do about it legally without the paper. I wonder if Pierce knew it wasn't here. You mean, maybe they took it? It's possible. But they just got into town yesterday, and nothing in this cabin was disturbed. No. Come on outside. Maybe we can find some tracks around here. Ah, oh, it beats me. I know that paper was in that tin box. Sergeant, just look at me. He's so awful for King as usual, making a fool of himself. He sure likes King since he pulled him out of the river. Oh. We've got no time for that dog, son. Oh, look, he dug up a mitten. Mabel, bring that here. It's Pop. Where do you want to look, Sergeant? Everywhere, Pete. Here's one of your mittens, Mabel Berry Pop. Gee, if Mabel digs them all up, you'll have about five pairs. Yes, wouldn't you know it? That fool dog has stole at least five mittens, and he digs up one that isn't even mine. Well, good fur lining in this one. I've got to the point where I'll wear it, even if it doesn't match. Hey, what's this? A paper. Well, for the... Preston, it's the grub stake paper. What? Well, how in Did... thunderation. Didn't Mabel do something bad again? No, not this time, Jimmy. We don't know yet how he did it, but Mabel saved your dad a lot of money. Give me that mitten, Pete. King and I are going to find the owner of it. There they come now, Sergeant. That's Pierce and Bill. I want them to cross the lobby and start down the hall. Here, King. This mitten. Find him, fella. Can he trace the scent? Certainly. And he has a nice fresh scent to trace. I'm going to be doubly sure. Hey, you go away. Whose dog is this? He's mine, Pierce. He's trying to find the owner of that mitten. He seems to think it's yours. What? What? I never saw it before. King knows it's yours. And I've searched your room and found its mate. Here it is. Hey, Pierce. Shut up. I don't believe it. You have no proof you found that in my room. I'll tell clerk witnessed it. You're both under arrest for breaking and entering Pete's cabin. Hey, where'd you find this? You'll mitten? find out all about it. Watch him, King. I'm jailing you. Get going. You're not going to... All right, King. It all happened because of a mongrel pup named Mabel. And when you were safe in jail, King and I are going to take Mabel a bone. He saved us a lot of work, didn't he, boy? <laughs> These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit, and all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at the same time. Hugh Holder speaking. This is the Michigan Radio Network.